I meet lots of interesting people who I want to help. And the best way for me to give back is to quickly share who they're helping professionally and who they wish they could privately or philanthropically help more. And I help you by keeping the interview short and sweet. People in my circle can pick and choose who to directly and indirectly help with their business or charitable contributions. Who are you helping? Don't forget to subscribe or follow me on YouTube and TikTok so they start paying me to do more content like this. Let's get started. Hey, how's it going? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is for Who Are You Helping? I'm involved in commercial real estate, and you can see that through the Real Estate is a Scam and the DanDoesDeals.com. DanDoesDeals.com, I usually interview commercial real estate sponsors, syndicators, buyers, sellers, and all that sort of stuff. But sometimes somebody shows up in my circle where I'm suspicious there could be some overlap, some way that we could do business with each other, but I need to know more and just because I'm the type of person that likes to check multiple boxes at the same time I figure well why not share that with you as well so here we are so before we get uh, too focused on your business though uh, Jennifer how are you doing today hello Dan thank you so much for having me here today and it's an honor to speak with someone who is so proficient and prolific in the commercial space doing well sitting in the Sun the weather is fantastic here in North Texas after a long freezing two weeks with no Sun so I'm sitting outside and enjoying it, soaking up that vitamin D while it's here. We've got a scarcity, scarcity of vitamin D this time of year, so we got to get it in. I love it. I love it. All right. And so just so you know what's going on here, when I have somebody on here, uh, the first question I always have them uh, answer is, who do you help professionally? And the reason for that, just so you know, it comes from marketing. The most difficult part of marketing is called messaging, which is explaining what exactly it is that you do. And some people aren't that great at expressing it. I'm sure Jennifer's amazing at it based on her acumen. But really, there's somebody out there who gives you money on a fairly re regular basis. And people don't do that unless they have a good reason. And that's what I'm looking to find out. What is it that you do? Who do you help professionally? So Jennifer, who do you help? Yes, sir. In the commercial context, I do broker commercial loans up to about $5 million. Mm -hmm. And then if we needed anything beyond that, then we could still put in an application and see what we can do. So that's one of my lines of business that I developed to help accommodate one of my other lines of business, which is off-market acquisitions. So I help investors find properties off market in both commercial and the retail uh, single family home space. And so in order to do that effectively, I have to be able to provide loans. That way people have enough money to go and purchase more properties. So what's the point in doing acquisitions of these properties if people don't have the capital to fund them? So it's just natural that I was able to do both. And then I also... Uh, sell a lot of data and skip tracing for people who are doing the marketing to find those deals. And so we pull about 2 million records per month. Commercial data is not as strong. Uh, you know, from what I hear, commercial data is probably best through Reonomy, Crexy, LoopNet, things like that. But we do a fine job with the off-market single-family home space at three cents per record, skip tracing pool. And then really kind of the last line of business that I have is I have my uh, license in the commercial division of EXP through EXP referral. And the reason why is because as we're doing all these deals, most of them are not gonna be off market. 90% of deals, whether you're marketing from the side of a bus, PPC, radio, TV, et cetera, whatever your marketing channel is, 90% of them are going to wanna sell retail on the MLS with some sort of realtor. So why should I let all that money just sit there uh, focusing on off market deals? So I have my license to build teams of realtors so that I can then refer them deals in both commercial and uh, the single family space. I'm from the internet. I don't know if you know that about me, but because I'm from the internet, everywhere I go, I know it's good. We got Jennifer back. I'm explaining a little thing uh, that is important for the audience to understand when it comes to uh, interacting with people remotely. And everywhere I've gone, there's always a big campaign. It's very important to shop local and support your local economy. That makes a lot of sense because you want your own local area to uh, have a strong uh, economy. But when you're from the internet, that poses some problems. So the way that I solve it is I find out 
who's the secondary beneficiary of choosing my guest professionally? So in other words, uh, the way that I ask the question, Jennifer, is uh, who do you wish you could help more? And that could be privately, it could be voluntarily, it could be philanthropically, it could be artistically. Some people just don't get enough time uh, to spend with their own families. And I think that's one of the best uh, reasons out there to uh, help some people more. But some people are overachievers. They have orphan is all over the world and stuff. <laughs> right. That's true. Who would I like to help more, Dan? Well, I hope it's not um, too specific to say that I would like to help more women, okay? And I know that that's, well, obviously I'm a woman, but I would like to help more women be financially secure and empowered. Um, I've hired, you know, in my virtual assistant agency that I own that I've had for five years, I see a lot of women who are kind of terrorized by their husband once they start making a good bit of money because the husbands don't like it. And part of the counseling that I do whenever I hire a woman, one of the first three questions I ask is, how is your husband husband going to feel whenever you start making a lot of money? Oh, he'll be fine with it. I said, okay, we'll see, right? So, and even men have said to me, Jen, I don't know how your husband takes a back seat to your success like he does. I couldn't do it. And then I have to explain to them what his day looks like, how he has complete freedom. He doesn't have to commute anywhere. He doesn't have stress. He just cooks, cleans, takes care of the kids, and pretty much does whatever he wants whenever he wants. And when I explain it to the men like that, all of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound so bad so bad and i said look it's not about ego it's about love if it was about ego yet then yes it might be found quite intolerable but you know we've been together 22 years i was a little girl riding my bike uh to and fro our first the first job that i met him i didn't even have a car yet so he's known me since i was 16. so this is not about ego this is about loving someone and wanting to make their life easy and that just happens to be a skill set that I have, fortunately, is being able to connect in a business way that has set us free. Our children are homeschooled. We can travel anywhere in the world anytime we want because he doesn't have to work. And I'm, all my businesses are virtual. I've built them that way. If I can't monetize sitting on the couch, I don't do it, right? If I have to be somewhere physically, if it's geographically dependent, I don't do it. So I've created with him a life where we're both free but not all women have that luxury of a spouse who's that supportive and so my job is to kind of tell women like what do you want this shitty relationship or your freedom and that's a tough call for a lot of women but i would always 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 choose personally my financial freedom because the right people will show up when you're you when you're your best you the best people show up and so I have to teach a lot of women that I'm not trying to be a home wrecker. I'm trying to create better homes and better legacies for their children, especially in these developing nations where I do a lot of hiring for my staff. And so that's who I'd like to help more are are women around the world who need that financial independence. One of my staff is a political refugee in Nicaragua. Her Mm -hmm. father is in prison because he was on the wrong side of the regime of the regime change. And she can't leave the house to work. She's basically a political prisoner. But by being able to make money from home, that gives her more options in terms of leverage within her local community, within her family. She's not just a victim uh, and someone with no power. She has a lot of talent. So why shouldn't she be able to make money? Right. So, you know, I do really enjoy empowering uh, women and all people, not just women, but all people all around the world who otherwise wouldn't have gainful employment. Right, right. Primary caregivers definitely have to, you know, get more credit than uh, than they really do. And and I don't think it matters uh, whether they're a man or a woman. And it's definitely right. it's it's taxing no matter like no matter what you got in your shorts, so to speak. It's definitely <laughs> a lot of work. There's a lot of things that you're not prepared for because uh, and, and maybe maybe part of it is uh, uh, judgmentalism. Right. You know, like like self judging, yes. but also the perception of others and it's also just like having a business in the sense that your work is never done so so it's, well it's said. 
Right. So, so anyway, so that, that's fantastic. I think, uh, you know, uh, anybody who uh, is in that primary uh, caregiver situation, they need to be cut a whole lot of slack. And uh, they also have to understand the importance of it. You know, you like you discover so much about yourself when you are a primary caregiver. It's, it's really, really a, a, a touching process. And I think it uh, bleeds into the rest of your relationship uh, in a positive way. But the next question then is, uh, you, you've mentioned uh, uh, who you wish you could help more. Uh, I want to imagine, I always think of it as like the genie in the lamp or Santa Claus, something like that, uh, except for it's the audience. Uh, how can people help you, Jennifer? You know, that is a great question, Dan. And I'm glad that you asked. I'm often so busy thinking about how I can help others. I don't think about how anyone can can help me but really Dan this as kumbaya as this may sound the thing that people can do to help me is to um it's gonna sound a little bit unconventional I want them to think back to their childhood at a time when maybe they didn't feel safe seen and heard and reach back to that time in your life in your childhood and I want you to picture the person that you were at that time the little boy or the little girl and I want you to tell them all the things that they didn't hear at the time and needed to hear. If they need a hug, give them a hug. Have a conversation with that child who was hurt and talk to them on a weekly basis, maybe before your holy day, if it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you don't have a holy day, maybe you have a rest day. Talk to that little child in there who is probably still hurt to some extent and let them know that you're going to take care of them, that they're safe, and that there's nothing to worry about. And I think if we did that, Dan, we wouldn't have wars, which mess us up generationally. We wouldn't have famine. We wouldn't have corruption. Because all of these horrible things span from a time in our life whenever we felt absolutely helpless and terrified. People don't start wars and famines, and they, they're not corrupt unless they feel still terrified in some way as a small child that never left them. They don't feel safe. But what they don't realize is that big them can take care of little them. And in doing so, I believe that we can heal the world. No one's coming to rescue you, but adult you can rescue little you. And in that sense, we can truly achieve a peaceful world. So how does that relate to how you raise your kids? That's and I know question. that you didn't mention it. I, this is my curiosity talking because it's like, okay, that is how you relate to yourself. But when it comes to parenting, I like that's what I think is the cure to wars. It's raising yes. your kids better. Okay. And Absolutely. what that means is understanding see that person over there? That's a real person. That's not an imitation person. This is not, <laughs> game. not this an game. Not an NPC, as they say. Yeah, they don't get to restart and have another run for another quarter. It, it doesn't work like that. So, you know, create the world that you want to live in by treating people the way that you wish you'd be treated. You know, it's it, so, I, I don't know, I, I like to use uh, the two versions of the golden rule, the, the Western one, yes. one to others as you'd ha have them do unto you. Uh, but uh, the negative form is uh, the, sometimes it's attributed to Lao Tzu, sometimes it's uh, attributed to, to Confucius, but it's don't do unto others as you wouldn't have them do unto you. And if I find <laughs> if you take right. those two, and use them both at the same time, you've got some great stuff there. So that's how people can help you. I love the direction we took that. And now the question on everybody's mind must be how to reach out and help. Uh, me personally, if you want to get in touch with me, I got a super duper distinct last name. So I'm easy to find, especially on LinkedIn. And uh, you can check out realestateisascam.com and the book is on Amazon. And if you're in commercial real estate, I do want to talk to you. You should check to, you should check out dandoesdeals.com to find out how I document my substantive relationships with the SEC. You don't get ants in their pants. But Jennifer, if people <laughs> want to reach Great. out to you, uh, how should they, uh, how should they do it? Uh, it? It can phone, email, website, Facebook, whatever. Sure. So my email is Jen at REI is in real estate investing. So Jen at REI data source.net. And again, that's Jen, J E N at REI data source.net. 
All right, beautiful. And then I only have one other question. Uh, so, so that was uh, who Jennifer helps professionally, who she wishes she could help more, how people can help her, and how to reach out. But my last question, Jen, is um, did you know that if people in the audience hit that hideous subscribe button that's down there, that helps me? Great. Yes, of course. It helps you a lot. That's what you need. We all need those sub subscribers and we do our best to bring valuable content. I know you do. I would be curious to know how you track a substantive relationship. That's awesome. I always wonder how people truly track that. So that's, uh, that's fascinating. It's good information. All right, sweet. And of course, uh, I got to tell you, the only consequence of hitting the subscribe button, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does mean my videos like these ones might show up on your list of suggestions. But quite frankly, you could ignore those suggestions because I really appreciate the fact you even spent this time with me. Just like Jennifer, I appreciate you joining me today. This has been really, really awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for this opportunity and conversation. Sweet. Thanks. Hey there, are you interested in commercial real estate deals? Would you like to build your network of investors and deal sponsors? Well, the best thing I can do for you is have you appear on a chance encounter interview as featured on dandoesdeals.com. You may know me from 506 Be Me or as a top commercial real estate voice on LinkedIn. And if I had to think of the top factors in your success in commercial real estate, my top two would be your network, and your ability to effectively explain how deals work with effective communication. The 15 minute chance encounter format, it checks both of those boxes and they ensure that you can share your private deals with me without the SEC calling it a public solicitation. So hop onto LinkedIn. You can see my name is over here, Dan Freidenberg, and search for my name. And the, the best way to reach me and book that is to message me through LinkedIn. And don't worry, it doesn't matter if you decided to enter this space just last week or two weeks ago, or if it was decades ago, it'll be fun and easy to look good. We're just asking multiple choice questions based on your core competencies you look to contribute, your level of sophistication, all that kind of stuff. So I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks a lot, bye. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg and realestateisascam.com has the brand new book, which is what you should have. You should have the book and what's the book all about real estate's a scam well it's my biggest thing is taking aim at coaches who teach people how to do illegal real estate transactions because that pissed me right off when i learned about it and the other thing too is um, the different securities acts that uh, basically mean if you're poor then you're gonna have to meet a bunch of lawyers and get really really lucky just to make sure you're not breaking the law by uh, raising money anyway so uh, i hope you check it out thanks guys bye